I want us to talk about timings. I want to bring in part of the prophetic that God was giving to me. Timings. I'm going to really trade on some dangerous ground here, but it has to be said. Timings. Here are some of the questions as I was closing the year. We are all closing the year, but as I was closing, these are the questions. Uh, you know, when you, uh, when you get into a... Uh, whether it's a website of, you know, product or company, it, it leads you to FAQs. What are FAQs? Frequently asked questions. Let me tell you, in Zimbabwe, there were, there's been some frequently asked questions. Um, and I've come up with seven of them. The frequently asked questions. Because when these questions are given, now... You as the body of Christ must not also be saying, what is being said? No, we all get onto the bandwagon. What? It's all what you say. You also get onto that band. Nothing wrong with that. I don't want anybody to get some guilt here that there's something. There's nothing wrong. But I'm saying you as the prophetic voice of the church or of our generation should be asking why. Now the church is the most amazing. Then they'll start saying, Lord, we are praying for a Joseph. We are praying for a Daniel. We are praying for a, you know, they are praying, we are praying, ah, that's my, we are praying for a Deborah. We are, we, you know, they, everybody's praying for somebody else instead of them. Say, Lord, like Isaiah says, send me. Amen. Yes. That is the prophetic voice. Yes. Send me where I need to go. Because the problem of where we are is because people are praying for the other brother and the other sister. I'm not waiting to be perfect. I won't get there in this world. But in order to fulfill the mandate that God has put on my life, I'm asking the Lord, send me. Send me to those desolate places, Isaiah would say. Send me to the places where nobody else wants to go. Who will take us to a better tomorrow? We are asking that question. And I'm standing here and saying, you, you are the one. You're sitting there and you're thinking, what else can I do? No, you just do what God has told you to do. Start where you are, with whoever you are with, and with whatever you have in your hands. Don't wait for something magnanimous, something big, something magnificent. Start where you are. Let the environment around you begin to say, yeah, there is a woman of God here. There is a man of God here. Things are changing here. Things are transforming here. Turning. And let me tell you, it's going to be messy. When you do that, you're going to be misunderstood. You're going to be misjudged. You're going to be, you're going to be, do you know what? I enjoy it because you become a talk conversation around. That conversation is necessary for you because you keep focusing on Christ and not to correct people. I've decided I'm going to change and do what God has called me to do in this nation. In certain things I will do, it will bring controversy and conversations. Guess what? I keep going. We are not, as a church, we are not going to bring transformation and change in our generation if we continue the way we are continuing right now. Let me just tell you at the upfront, those of us who are going to be in, in manufacturing, in the uh, marketplace, those of us who are going to be in media, those of us who are going to be in the church, those of us who are going to be in education, those of us who are going to be in the medical fraternity, you are going to have to do some bindauko somewhere. Yes. You are going to have to do some things to bring change. That change is not at the stroke of something. Yes. We are waiting for a stroke. Change has begun. Let me tell you, actually, God spoke to me that the change in Zimbabwe started in 2013. Yeah. Transformation. For, and let me also give it to you. It will, it will culminate and consummate itself by 2020. You're asking, what have we done to deserve? How will we ever move forward at this going rate? Have you ever been around a situation and you say, look, ha, I don't think we're going anywhere. With this, I don't think we're going anywhere. So you're asking, how will we ever move forward? These are the questions that are facing you as you walk out of the church. The next one is, does anybody out there care? Is there anybody, does anybody care? No, yes. Which is the correct way of making it in this environment? 
Where? How, how do we make it in this environment? I get asked those questions. Pastor, what do you think, what do you think is the next business that will make money? How do we make it in this environment? The other one, the FAQ, is that why do we have to go through what we are going through? Why? Don't waste our time praying that, Lord, I'm praying that there's going to be a, a 30 degree Celsius in this place in Jesus' name. You're wasting your time because God has ordered the seasons to happen. So there are certain things you're praying for or praying against. The Lord says, ah, oh, boy, no, I can't. I've said it will happen that way. You cannot now want to reverse it this way because God has ordained it to happen that way. Now you've got to be close to the Lord to understand that. So we spend the past three years, the past 10 years, the past 15 years in Zimbabwe, Praying for certain things not to happen. Yet the Lord has ordained for them to happen that way because there is a greater sovereignty and will that he wants to execute for this nation and he cannot do it any other way except the way that we find ourselves going. So if you don't understand the times and timings of the Lord, you are going to be messed up. You are going to be miserable in depression. People are taking tablets who go anyway. Say depression. They are depressed. How are they depressed? They're just asking themselves, how do I make it tomorrow? And so on. Instead of realizing this is the season where there is no abundance. This church, for the past five, six years, we have brought the message that brace up. The times are going to be difficult. Downsize, right size. Get yourselves in one good shape. No, pastor is just saying these things, ah, but no. You know, you, you keep going against the grain. Then you go and have a head-on collision in a year's time. And he says, but this is what he spoke about. Because the prophetic came. I just didn't predict to you what your cell phone number is. <laughs> but let me tell you, well, the prophetic voice has come. It has told us that we need to right size, not to double up. We need to reduce our weight, what we carry. These are difficult times. And then, guess what? Other people take advantage and say, no, they're not going to be difficult times. I'm going to come up with a gimmick. So people then get flocking to a particular direction. They get disappointed. People are delusional out there. Now you walk to people and say, oh, you're one of those as well. Now, let me tell you, go and tell them that, yes, our pastor is a prophet, but he's not going to tell you your phone number, what you ate for breakfast. He's not going to say, he's going to tell you what God is saying at this time about where we should be and how we should prepare ourselves for that. And that's what I'm here to tell you. So, the seasons. And the place. Sometimes you are in the wrong place. And you expect God to move. God moves. That's why he has to tell Abraham and say, Iwe, I want to do something for you, but I can't do it when you are in this space. Move out of here. You would almost argue, so, but Lord, if you wanted to do anything in my life, you can still do it here. No, God says, no, that's not how I work. I'm a sovereign God. I want you to leave your home, your family, your location, your geography. I want you to go to another land. Place. Then plays an important role. Are you in the right space and place? Those are things we're going to talk about. And then, what's also very key is that who are the players? Sometimes we don't acknowledge who God has raised to be the players because in any of these, God uses individuals to move his people forward. So even in the New Testament, you find that the apostles, you find that Paul emerges to go to the Gentiles and Barnabas and the others start following suit in that sort of direction. But he was the player for that moment to encourage others. So who are the players? You've got to understand who they are. 
Sometimes we are all caught up in not understanding how God is going to use certain people and those people must be prayed for, must be supported, must be encouraged because God is going to use them in that particular way. We stand with them. We don't want to be like them. We just become ourselves. We encourage each other in how God is allowing us to pay this. Can you figure that out in our season in this nation? That God has a chronos process that is put in play. But he also has a kairos or kairos events. That he is saying this ought to happen to begin this chronos process. Now until those kairos moments have happened, you can scream all you want. It's not going to happen. This is not the gospel you wanted to hear on the 3rd of January. It is not. I can tell you it's not. But let me tell you, hold on to it. You're going to be sober when you walk out of there. You're going to really look at yourself in the mirror and say, Lord, I'm here for the long haul. I am here for the long haul. Even pastor is saying 2020. Uh, even if you say 2040, I'm here for the long haul. Until death separates me with this. I am here for the long haul. So he does that. And he says, the other Kairos event says, it has got to be in the fourth generation. <laughs> which, <laughs> which means it can't be in the second generation. It can be in the third generation. It has to be in the fourth generation. I'm trying to make us understand here because we, I don't want us to go to this prophet and that prophet and that nganga and that impostor and so on. I don't want that. Let's read the word of God and understand it for ourselves that God is designing us to actually succeed in our time. Stay with me.